Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about Carol Churchill and David Land's dance play, A Mouthful of Birds. Now, uh, I want to start out by saying this is a video that was requested. Um, so as always, if you have requests for videos you would like me to do, uh, you can let me know, send me a comment, email me, whatever it is, and I will attempt to do it at some point. Uh, the second thing that I want to say is that this is not necessarily the type of play that I normally gravitate to because this is a dance play. And so, like, this is one of the, the interesting sort of paradoxes about primarily being a reader of drama um, as opposed to an actor or a, a theater person as such. Um, I mean, any drama, any, any play that one reads is inherently incomplete because scripts are almost universally written to be enacted. And so that performance is part of the reality of that script. Uh, the potential performances are part of the reality of that script. But with something like A Mouthful of Birds, it's so much more incomplete when we read it on the page because like, there are whole scenes that maybe have no dialogue whatsoever. Like, I think the opening scene... Um, scene one just starts act one scene one just starts Dionysus dances I mean that's the stage direction it tells us what happens but it doesn't really tell us what happens like it's not the same type of stage direction as something like say Dionysus enters, he goes to the table, he pours himself a glass of water or something like that. Like, we can tell exactly what that is. And the actor can inflect that in different ways and, and convey different things through performing that stage direction. But what does Dionysus dances look like? And that's a really difficult question. That's a really difficult stage direction because that can mean so many things. And so um, and and so in terms of reading the play, that's a, a huge challenge to envision what this play actually looks like on stage. Uh, it's doubly a challenge for me because I don't know almost anything about dance. Um, like my sort of critical experience of knowing anything about dance is limited to a couple of conference presentations that I've been to that have been about dance as a as a performance form. It's really not something I know much about. But um, A Mouthful of Birds is not necessarily an adaptation of Euripides's Bacchae, but it's very heavily influenced by Euripides's Bacchae, and that is something I do know about. So, the play, there's not necessarily a plot to A Mouthful of Birds. What there is is a series of vignettes, of sort of short uh, scenes or short interactions between characters that are not necessarily closely connected to one another, but they, they're built around certain themes. And these are themes that Churchill and Lan are picking up from the Bakai and that they're reworking. They're, they're experiencing in new ways. Um, and so the, the two themes that I think are most interesting in here are the theme of transformation or metamorphosis and sparajamos and omophagia, which I'll talk more about in just a minute. Um, but this idea of transformation or metamorphosis is really central to Greek mythology, Greek tragedy, and to the Bacchae. 
um, because in Euripides' play, we have transformations that occur or are perceived to occur, which is not necessarily the same thing. Um, so, for instance, uh, when Pentheus has imprisoned Dionysus, uh, Pentheus goes into the prison and Dionysus transforms himself into a bull. So we have that transformation. Agave perceives, in, in, at the, in the latter stages of the play, Agave perceives Pentheus as a mountain lion whom she viciously attacks. So we have these tr issues of transformation, but we also have transformation um, or metamorphosis performed in a mouthful of birds. And we have a, we have a section here um, in Act One, Part Two, uh, scene nine subsection one i guess um we have a character named lena and we have a section called lena and spirit transformations now lena is a really interesting character name because in greek mythology uh lena i think i'm i think i'm remembering this correctly uh lena was someone that zeus wanted to have sex with um and she was not all that keen and so he transformed zeus transformed himself into a swan and raped her so we have this section called lena and spirit transformations and the spirit is just this sort of haunting figure um and this is all uh stage direction by the way so he is a frog she approaches threateningly as a snake he seizes her arm and becomes a lover she responds, but as he embraces her, he becomes an animal and attacks the back of her neck. She puts him down to crawl, and he becomes a train. As he chugs under the table, she blocks the tunnel with a chair, and he rolls out as a threatening bird. She becomes a baby bird asking to be fed, and he feeds her. As he goes to get more food, she becomes a panther, knocks him to the ground, and starts to eat him. After a moment, he leaps up with a fierce roar. She goes into the next scene. So I'm assuming this is all performed through dance. I have a little bit of trouble visualizing it, again, just because I don't know much about dance. But we have here this series of rapid transformations. And this is something we do see in Greek mythology. Um, so this idea of like continual changing of form is really significant thematically um, as well as visually on the stage itself. We've also got another really interesting transformation that I that I find really striking, and this is at the beginning of Act Two, uh, where we have Herculean Barbon come in. Herculean Barbon seems to be a hermaphrodite maybe certainly a trans person um from 19th century france and herculean tells their story like we've got this extensive monologue here that goes on for almost two and a half pages um where Herculean tells about sort of people's inability to read their gender and sometimes being treated as a man, sometimes being treated as a woman, and the sort of difficulty of, of moving back and forth there. But then we've also got this character named Derek, um, who we first see him lifting weights, uh, working out. Um, and, and that's how Herculean encounters him as well. Um, but then we get this stage direction near the end of Herculean's monologue uh, that says, Derek holds all the objects. That's objects that Herculean has sort of taken out during the monologue. 
and has dressed himself in the shawl and petticoat. He sits in the chair and becomes Herculean. <clears throat> she stands beside him and takes the objects from him and packs them into her suitcase. And then Derek gives us Herculean's monologue. So Derek sort of transforms into Herculean and picks up this monologue um, that Herculean had told. This monologue of metamorphosis, gender metamorphosis. Um, and, and so we get Derek undergoing that not only to become a feminized character, but also to become a different character, to become Herculean. And of course, Pentheus in, um, in the Bacchae undergoes that similar transformation where Dionysus convinces him to dress in women's clothing uh, to go out and observe the Bacchans at their ritual where he dies. Um, and I, I wanted to just come back very briefly to this section from Lena and Spirit uh, Transformations, where it says, uh, as he goes to get more food, she becomes a panther, knocks him to the ground, and starts to eat him. Because this idea of eating is really significant, again, in both the Bakai and in A Mouthful of Birds. And it's related specifically to the Greek rituals of Sparajamos and Omophagia. Sparajamos um, can be translated... I don't know what a, a good sort of direct translation would be, but basically it's the ritual tearing apart of a sacrificial animal. And then Omophagia is the eating of that flesh. So this relates to to Greek and, and actually religious rituals you could find throughout antiquity, but to Greek religious rituals where a sacrificial animal would be slaughtered by literally ripping it limb from limb and then by consuming the raw flesh. In the Bacchae, that happens to Pentheus. Agave and the Menaeids tear Pentheus limb from limb and they eat some of his flesh in a, a sort of Bacchic ex, uh, ecstatic madness. And we get that thematically in this play as well. Um, like in Act 1, Scene 10, called Possession, it says Dionysos appears to Doreen. Doreen is possessed by Agave. Agave says, I put my foot against its side and tore out its shoulder. I broke open its ribs. And that's that's a line from the Bakai where she where Agave describes uh, how she killed this lion, which is actually Pentheus. Then the next scene, 11, is called Fruit Ballet. It says, whole company is their main characters. This dance consists of a series of movements mainly derived from eating fruit. It emphasizes the sensuous pleasures of eating and the terrors of being torn up. Act 12 is called Possession again. Dionysos appears to Derek. Derek is possessed by Pentheus. And Derek says, She put her foot against my side and tore out my shoulder. They broke open my ribs. So again, we have this ritualized performance, in this case via dance, but we have this ritualized performance of eating, of tearing things apart, or tearing people apart. Um, and then this culminates in Act 2, scene 24, called The Death of Pentheus. Um, it says, Derek, still dressed as he was by, by Dionysus, is possessed by Pentheus. Pentheus chants, kill the god, kill the god, kill the god. In stage directions, Pentheus is brought by Dionysus into a dance of the whole company in which movements of extreme happiness and of violence from earlier parts of the play are repeated. Apart from Derek, all the other actors are dressed in the clothes of their modern characters. Pentheus is torn to pieces by Doreen, who is possessed by Agave, and the other women who are possessed by Bacchants. 
Hall slash Dionysos and Dan slash Dionysos work, uh, watch. When Pentheus is dead, Agave and the Bacchants become quiet and realize what they have done. Agave says, I broke open his ribs. I tore off his head. She gathers his limbs together. So again, we've got this, this theme, this recurring theme or this recurring image of destroying and eating, tearing apart and eating something or someone. And that's actually a really interesting theme, considering that A Mouthful of Birds is a play of vignettes, that it is a play that consists of short scenes that are not strongly connected to one another. There is a sort of torn apart quality, almost, to the way that the play is structured. 